Here for concert three, uh, this next concert features Scott Deal. Uh, Scott is an award-winning creator, producer, author, and performer. Scott's the founder of the Earth Day Model, a 24-hour worldwide telematic festival. Scott's also the director of the Tavel Arts and Technology Research Center at IUPUI in Indianapolis. As a performer, Scott has performed throughout North America, Asia, Europe, and Romeoville, Illinois. Uh, he has premiered several works during his career, and his recordings can be heard on several commercially released albums by Albany and Centaur, among many others. In 2011, Scott's collaboration with composer Matthew Bertner won the highly acclaimed Internet 2 Idea Award for their work, uh, Oxalic. I probably didn't say that right, so Scott, correct me if that's not right. But uh, Oxalic is a telematic opera held as an important realization uh, of meaningful opera for today's world. I'll also mention that Scott is a Yamaha artist and a, blank, uh, a black swamp percussion artist. So Scott, welcome. Thanks so much for being a part of this festival. Great to be here. I'm really looking forward to your concert. Thank you. So with that, if you'd like to say a few words before we get started. Sure. Um, I'm performing four works on the, the program this afternoon. Uh, three of them were submissions to uh, the festival. Uh, and one of those three actually was composed for me by my <clears throat> good friend, Christopher Biggs. And he submitted, I didn't know, but when I saw it, actually I wanted to, I was going to play it anyway. So that's, uh, uh, we will all fall in. But the, the work submitted that I chose out of a really a, a large pool of uh, wonderful compositions that were submitted, uh, auguring by Kyle Bren opens the concerts, multi-percussion solo uh, with electronics. And then also um, the last piece, Still Motion by Ted Moore which is uh, another multi percussion piece with uh, uh, electronics and also video, interactive video, as you'll see uh, in the performance. And so actually the video part, um, you'll see me live. I mean, it's on video, but you'll be able, I'm in my studio, but then there's sort of a virtual one that's going on. And actually if this was on a stage, that would be part of the performance, this video, this interacting with uh, this being created in real time by the software. So uh, with no further ado, I guess we should just jump right on in. Thank you. 
All right. Wow. Thank you. What a great concert. How about a round of applause to Scott and all of the composers? That's fantastic. Thank you. Great job. We've got, um, we've got about 10 minutes or so for some conversation and some questions. Uh, unfortunately, I have about 45 minutes worth of questions, so uh, we may not get to all of them. Uh, I just blown away by the concert. Really great, great work. Um, Scott, I just want to start with you, I guess. Uh, and I'm going to ask Scott a question, but if you have a question or if you'd like to contribute, uh, you can ask your question in chat and uh, we'll try to pick that up. Uh, or you can use the raise hand function, which you'll find in the lower right hand corner of the screen in the reactions submenu. So uh, if you have a question, go ahead and raise your hand and we'll, we'll get you in. Uh, or, you know, there's only 32 people, you can just unmute your mic and, and uh, ask your question uh, directly. Uh, but Scott, I want to start with you. Um, so, you know, you've been such a great champion for new music for really your whole career. Uh, and you've done these types of things before. You know, you were given uh, quite a few pieces to select from uh, through the New Music Engine website. What went through your mind as you were thinking about creating and crafting this concert and selecting works? Uh, great question. It was very difficult because uh, I think there were about 20 to 25 works and most of them were really fantastic. Uh, I mean, the overwhelming majority, I was like, gee, I'd love to play this. I'd love to play that. And so it became a, trying to think about the overall program. Uh, I, I really wanted to play Avatar, the improvisation piece uh, with my uh, colleague, Jason. This, and so that was going to be in there. And then when I saw that uh, Chris Biggs put uh, We'll All Fall In into the mix, I certainly wanted to play that. I love that piece. He wrote it for me two years ago, and it's just so much fun to perform. And so then it was just a matter of finding a couple of pieces from the, the submissions that would fit those two. And both of those are vibraphone pieces. So I was thinking, well, okay, I don't want to do an all vibraphone concert. There was a lot of vibraphone music as I'd put that as a criteria or as one thing that I would be willing to do. I think uh, I speak for everyone when I say nobody wanted an all vibraphone concert. <laughs> so, love the vibraphone, nothing but yeah, I, I think we're all in agreement on that, Scott. Yeah. So, so uh, just, you know, looking for pieces to round out that also I was attracted to, you know, that uh, I mean, you know, putting these pieces together is a lot of work as an investment. And so also to, to find a piece that I'm not just going to play uh, for this weekend, but to play for the future you know, numerous times and, and have a part of, you know, to live with me for a while. So you, you're kind of looking for a friend, you know, I mean, you, you spend so much time with these pieces and you get to know them and the composers. And, and so you, you choose carefully because you want to make it last for a while. And so both these pieces, I just love uh, Kyle's piece and I love Ted's piece. They're, they're amazing pieces of music, uh, really talented individuals, both those guys. And so uh, I'm looking forward to, you know, having a nice ride with both these pieces for quite a while. Yeah, let me piggyback onto that because, you know, it's, it's, I think uh, Kyle's here, uh, uh, Kyle Brinsworth uh, work augering. Uh, first off, I, just, I thought it was just a wonderful shape that, you know, at least for me, it really kept me on the edge of my seat. Um, and so congratulations, Kyle, on a, on a great work. But, you know, one of the things that you just talked about, Scott, and I'd like, Kyle, if you'd like to comment on this too, which is, you know, oftentimes at a festival where a composer is providing a work for a the featured performer, uh, the composer gets, you know, maybe 15 minutes of interaction with the performer during sound check time. So can you talk a little bit about uh, either Scott or Kyle um, or Ted uh, about the interactions that you guys had uh, in prep in preparing uh, the works for the Turn Up Festival? Yeah, I can I can hop on that. Um, well, first of all, uh, this is great. And I loved all the pieces. And thank you, Scott, for all your incredible work on auguring um, and on all of the pieces, because it really, really shows the amount of care um, that you took. And I think that was a huge part of it. I, you know, I submitted this piece and I actually had emailed Scott sort of asking about the setup and we sort of started a relationship that way. And I, I knew that once he selected my piece for the festival, I, I knew that I wanted to get a little bit of FaceTime with him somehow, you know, even just on a sort of casual personal level before we all dove into the music because 
I mean, that's something that you get in a in-person collaboration that is, you know, you have to sort of manufacture in uh, this virtual space. So we set up a call and we were able to just like bond a little bit, um, which I don't know, I find that, you know, really important, especially because like Scott says, this is a piece that maybe he wants to keep playing. And, you know, I would love to continue to collaborate with him and, and to have that relationship uh, was really, really important. So, uh, but it's just, you know, because of the way that the virtual space worked, you have to sort of be more intentional about those things. Yeah, in a lot of ways, this may be one of those things that we try to keep moving forward in the industry uh, as we connect, you know, performers with composers that, you know, taking advantage of this virtual space, at least to create some face time, as you put it. I want to move on because we are running short on time. I want to move on to Chris Biggs's piece. And I saw Chris was here as well. Um, you know, Chris, I, I don't know the novel, the graphic novel that your piece is based upon. Uh, so could you, um, could you tell us a little bit more about that novel and uh, perhaps maybe how that inspiration manifests in the work uh, itself? Uh, sure. I think it's relatively abstract, um, but basically I was reading it when Scott and I got together for two days to work on stuff. And we stayed up pretty light talking about things, uh, including climate change and like human, future human life and whatnot. And in that graphic novel, there's one scene that I think it kind of comes down to, which is there's a, a dad playing with some kids on ice. And he's just basically unable to really invest in the child's happiness because the ice is going to crack one day and they'll all fall in. Um, and, you know, it's all going to be gone. It's fleeting kind of thing. So I think, I think what the work is, it's like there's this fleetingness to all things. There's this relatively short-term and long-term uncertain future for humanity. Um, but at the same time, there's just beauty to it. Um, and so I just took that as kind of an inspiration, uh, particularly that one part of the graphic novel. Great, thank you. You know, Chris, also I'd like to give you an opportunity if you'd like to you know, tell us a little bit about the Splice Institute and give a plug for it uh, and how you guys have approached it uh, this year in the time of COVID. Uh, sure, so Splice Institute pairs composers and performers to do work together over the summer. Um, and then we have an institute that's one week long and those works are premiered and we have five concerts and we have guest composers and things. So it's really focused on performing with electronics and bringing people together to do collaborations. And we're in about our seventh year now. Um, and we've had, you know, so at this point, hundreds of people participate. And what we've done online is we've, we couldn't get any equitable way of pairing people with limited experience in order to do collaborations. So we're really just focused on the educational component. So, you know, very low cost is what we did and um, a lot of uh, way more participants is how we're doing it. And if you're interested in this year's Institute, all the concerts are free uh, online. I think we'll probably stream on Facebook again. And that's the last week in June into early July. Um, and it should be good and our guest Composer is Carlos Scarlatti, and our guest performers are Pope Bama. And again, we'll have concerts every night that week, and it should be fun. Well, I think on behalf of a lot of the composers in our world, thank you for all you do to champion uh, the creation of new music and uh, trying to uh, connect performers with, with composers. And so thanks, Chris. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to move on to Avatar Improvisations. And I'm reminded that uh, Leonard Bernstein once said something along the lines of it's every academic's right to be wrong. I'm going to test that scenario here because I'm going to speak a little bit about uh, Jason and Scott's work. You know, as I understand it in your piece, the avatar of machine learning improvisational system is, I guess, listening to Scott and based upon what it you know, hears, it accesses and returns as well as perhaps adds to uh, improvisational data that was previously stored in its database. And all this hap is happening in real time. That is that each time that Scott performs, the database is also growing uh, the machine learning. Is that sort of very elementary explanation for the most part correct? Or did I just completely like bungle it all up? Uh, but if I could jump in there. Uh, sure, that'd be good, please, uh, Joe, anytime. Please Yes. You are mostly correct. The the one thing that uh, that is not yet really happening is is that it's that it's actually uh, changing the database in real time. Uh, so the the database actually 
if you if you know much about uh, machine learning, uh, it's it it takes a long time to build you know sort of a model of of uh, what of you know the musical style of somebody. So so we've done that slowly, and then that sort of sits on the side, and that's what we're querying using. Uh, machine listening basically where it's where it's like you know listening to what scott is doing there is also uh, pitch tracking going on so so when when scott is sort of like hovering in a in a certain key or a sonority uh it'll it'll sort of map to that uh but then it's also it's also uh using the machine learning model to come up with uh stuff in scott's own style but that's that's not uh it's it's not as though it's it's uh, you know, as it's tracking that pitch data. It's not also adding to the database as I had suggested. Is True. What you're yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's not. It, it's not the the database isn't growing. We're working on that. But uh, well, I, was, I guess the, the, that begs the question: Is that something that is that you desire to do? Is that something that you think you want to do? Yes, definitely. Yeah. That's that's where that's where we're headed, and eventually, you know, I, I feel like we'll be there. Probably not too in, in not too much time. We'll be there, but. I'm just reminded just to, just how incredible when we think about what is, you know, technologically happening in mm -hmm. real time, you know, yeah. for us, for us people, you know, that went through, you know, grad school in 1875. Yeah. It, it's, with the dinosaurs. With the, the, the dinosaurs. I mean, it's, it's incredible to think that, yeah. that this amount of processing, this amount of querying can happen and return such high quality audio all right you know right at our fingertips it's really to me it's it just blows my mind so us too yeah it's fantastic um so how long has the how long have you been developing this um the machine learning improvisational assistant and uh is it open source that people can get their hands on and you know use themselves or contribute to it in some way Jason, um, we, yes, we've been Jason. working on it. We've been working on it uh, since since I think we had our first conversation about it in 2017. Yeah. Uh, so we've been working on it for quite a while. Uh, we are working on a on a version uh, that we will that we will release. You know, uh, we we really want to make sure that it that it, uh, it it works. You know, completely idiot proof before we uh, we before we release it to the world. Uh, but, and if I can. Jason, if you don't mind me interrupting, if I can jump Go in. For it. I feel strongly about something about this. Is what we're, you know, look, we're fought, we're on the shoulders of some amazing, brilliant people. You know, David Cope. Uh, I, mean, I could go on and on. Just people who've been doing artificial intelligence and music since, you know, for fifty years. Um, our plan is is to have something that is very easy for for a musician who's not deeply immersed in that world who you know, maybe has a DAW, say Ableton Live, uh, and they wanna improvise and they wanna get into you know, having a, an improvisational assistant or an accompanist or a, a partner in improvisation. Uh, but we wanna make it very easy to use. And so that's what we've really focused on. And so this, this patch I was using, basically it goes, it's, a, it's, an, it's an Ableton Live patch that we haven't released yet, but that's how we use it. We put an Ableton Live and just use it with Live. And, uh, you know, with the idea of designing some things that any vibraphonist or percussionist or instrumentalist could pick it up and, and start getting really creative with it. Well, it's just brilliant. Just brilliant. What a wonderful piece and a wonderful, wonderful showcase of the technology that you guys have been working on. So thanks, thanks for sharing Thank it with us today. Thank you very much. Uh, Again, I just want to remind you, if you have some questions, we still have some time, please uh, put them in chat or raise your hand uh, using the reactions button at the bottom of your screen. Uh, but I want to talk to uh, Ted more about his work, uh, Still Motion. Uh, and I think I'm just going to start with the comments. I mean, uh, a lot of people were uh, mentioning in the chat window how, how cool I think the uh, loop effects were and stuff. So Ted, could you just talk a little bit about how this video was generated and how this piece gets put together? So the piece actually, the software all unfolds in real time. So there's no audio or video recorded before Scott plays the first measure. Um, and then the software, which is actually written in C++ to, with uh, using open frameworks, uh, captures the video and audio and then stores that for playback at different times throughout the piece. And, and those times are um, advanced through uh, foot pedals that Scott is pressing that move to different cues and then we'll 
recall different stored videos and play them back in you know ways that I've already programmed for them to be automated that way. And and how much of the score is um, uh, traditionally notated? Like the, choices of, I mean, I just wondered how much of it was improvisatory and how much was notated. Oh, there's no improvisation. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. It's so all written it's out. All notated. All written out. Yeah. Okay. And so, in a live performance, you would obviously you would just be projecting the video, right. and the live performer would be in front. I see. I see. Yes. Well, I, I think what the, the video was just sort of stunning and it kind of, you know, in this format for me anyway, it, it, it times felt like, oh, wait, wait, am I buffering? Right? <laughs> <laughs> what, have I, is my internet uh, dropping? And then once I got it, it was just, it was so engaging and it just, it made me begin to question, you know, I guess what was real and what wasn't to some extent, if that makes sense. Great. Yeah. I mean, uh, I'm glad it resonates with the glitch aesthetic we sort of all are put into now uh but that it wasn't uh you know it was composed before covid so i, I and i certainly nice didn't resonance. mean to decontextualize it in a way oh. that wasn't appropriate i just yeah. as i watched it my first and that was my first initial response yeah, because of my conditioning right so uh and regarding the score um i just want to say scott played an amazing it was an amazing performance i mean it's not an easy piece there's a lot of a lot of rhythms in there and uh scott really nailed it so thank you scott for a great performance, yeah. It, it's, it is an amazing piece. It's been rewarding to, to work on it, Good. really. Tricky well, rhythm, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just, I want to reiterate just how incredible I thought this uh, concert was, as was the first concert and the second concert. And I'd like to invite everybody to come back uh, to concert four, which will be a, a fixed media concert. And we're going to begin that. It's supposed to begin in one minute, but we're going to, we're going to just, shift our schedule a little bit. We had this built in. And so we'll begin that concert precisely at 4.05 Eastern time, which is 3.05 Central time. And Kay, what is it in Tucson time? Should be uh, 1.05. 1.05. So we'll see everybody in uh, right at five minutes. Thanks again. <laughs>